Hello everyone. So this is called Dance with the Devil. Another fairy tale. Again, Mr. Bink screamed from the front of the studio. Anastasia avoided looking at him as she went through the motions, hoping she could blend with the rest of the dancers. From the first moment Anastasia joined the ballet company, Mr. Bink had criticised nearly everything about her. Her posture was bad, her legs were too thick, the arch of her foot too flat, her bun too messy. Nothing went unseen or remarked upon. Faster! Some of you are falling behind the beat! Mr. Bink clapped his hands loudly. Anastasia! Sloppy! Sloppy! And you think you can dance a solo? Mr. Bink turned, but not before he let out a sound of utter disgust. This was loud enough to surely be heard by everyone in the room, even with the piano playing. Anna blinked rapidly, hoping to keep the tears back as she continued to move in rhythm with the rest of the dancers. She ignored the looks from her fellow dancers, which very between disgust and pity. She knew after a year of being with the company, she should be past the point where Mr. Bink could make her cry. Clearly, she wasn't. Enough, Mr. Bink said, the piano stopping as Bink's hand slashed through the air. I'm done looking at the group of you. We're finished for the day. You had better not perform like this tomorrow. I won't be embarrassed in front of our guest. Anna's eyes fluttered shut and she stood relieved. A look like today would be an easier day. They'd be held tomorrow, though, if they didn't please Mr. Bink when Markham Hills was there. He was the best known choreographer in the North East. Anna never pleased Mr. Bink, so things weren't looking good for her. But that was... Tomorrow's worry. She made her way towards the corner and settled in beside a bag. She grabbed the towel off where it sat on her bag, wiped the sweat still pouring down her face, with her back partially shielded her from the room. She tugged at first points, a slipper as she tensed and waited for the pain. The nail in her big toe wiggled with the movement. And... She sucked air in through her teeth as she finally got the slipper off. One down. She took a small pause before gathering up fortitude to tackle the next one, which shouldn't be quite as bad, as she tended to favour her right foot. She would have heard Mr Bink approaching if her senses hadn't been muted by the pain of the second slipper gliding over damaged flesh. She smelled the strong cologne and quickly took the discarded towel up to her ankles. It shielded her damaged feet from view, but it was too late, and she knew it. She turned slightly and looked over at Mr. Bink. His eyes were narrowed as he gazed at Anna, his mouth downturned. His shoe, one of the various shiny black leather ones he owned, pointed at her. This was it. What she'd been dreading, dreading since... She joined the actual company. I'm sorry to inform you, but no matter how hard I try to improve this situation, it isn't going to work out any longer. Nothing about his words, or the clipped voice he used to speak them, spoke of remorse. Please, I'll try harder. I'll practice twice as hard as everyone else, Anna said, not divulging that she already practiced every night after she left for the day. Mr Bink's eyes made no obvious travel down toward her now covered feet and the few grey strands left on his head swayed with a subtle shake of his head. There was a long slow exhale before he continued. I took you on as a favour to your aunt but we both know you aren't cut out for this. Maybe she should accept it. Give up and realise she'll never be a prima ballerina. Never. She looked around at the dancers, 
close enough to old Maria, including Maria, the shining star of their company. Maria's form was always perfect, her arches high, her hair always smooth. Maria was a reminder of everything Anna didn't have. Maria was born prima. She saw Maria, and several of the others weren't talking. Their ears were all turned in Anna's direction, and by later tonight, the entire company would have heard some version of this discussion. The humiliation settled a little heavier. Her spirit felt a little dingier and worn down. But dreams didn't die as easy as death. Not the real kind. She spoke, not caring that it would add to the tale of mortification. Please, just let me finish this season out. Mr Bink crossed his arms. And a single bony finger tapped against the silk sleeve of the other arm. I'll let you remain until the end of the season, because your aunt is fairly a large donor to this company, but you won't be performing. There's a limit to what I can suffer through. He leaned down, hunching over her, and I wouldn't go complaining to her, either. I know things about you. Her mouth opened, but nothing came out, as the pieces fit together. It had been him! Mr. Bink smiled, and he looked like a rabid dog baring his teeth before he turned. His heels hit the wooden floor and echoed through the room as he left. Anna slumped where she sat, the other dancers whispering around her until the room fell silent, and she was the only one left. She knew. Someone had searched her locker the other day. They hadn't made it a secret, but left her things bunched up and wrinkled, instead of the neat piles she always arranged. The pills she took to keep up her rigorous schedule had been gone. It didn't matter why she took them. If word got out, she'd be tossed out of the company. Mr Bink, it seems... Had finally won. And that is the first part of Dance with the Devil. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you in the next episode. Many blessings.